that can't use they can't use that to hurt anyone. It's okay. It's, it's all right. Okay. I repeat that sorry little mantra in my head to shut out all the other thoughts that I'm weak, disgusting, despicable. It's okay. It's alright. It's alright. Everything's okay. Dolohov checks the parchment before turning to the others who waits for what he says with grim expression. She's telling the truth. Bellatrix and Dolohov. Bellatrix and Lucian both curl their lips up in displeasure. Bella says under her breath. It doesn't matter, says Lucius. She's still named plenty of people who could be used yes who could who he could use instead yesterday. When he needs someone. We will have a huge amount of names to choose from. He will make he will have the strike his family of his list of possibilities, but I'm sure that it won't matter to him. The three of them all turn away from each other, back to face me. I'm just gonna read that, I'm just gonna read that thing again. I need to get my Lucius down and I keep changing it. And okay. It doesn't matter. I keep saying it like, not right, okay. No matter. It's because he would say no matter. He wouldn't say it doesn't matter. No matter, says Lucius. She named plenty of people who could use instead yesterday. When he needs someone, he will have a huge amount of names to choose from. He will have to strike his family off the list of possibilities, but I'm sure that it will not matter to him. The three of them all turn away from each other, back to face me. I grip my knees yet tighter to my chest. Are you doing well so far? You are doing well so far, Miss Granger, says Lucius. His voice calm, almost pleasant. You do understand. You do... Do you begin to understand, perhaps, that... This world, there are no morals, no principles, only irrational notions for fools to cling to. I take a deep breath through my nose. I won't give him any more of a victory over me than he already has. I'm afraid you don't understand. My voice is shaky, although I'm attempting to, to keep it level. Perhaps I need a different teacher. I really don't understand. My voice is shaking, although I attempted to keep it level. I'm just going to read that again. You got that I was reading that again. Okay. Uh, perhaps I need a different teacher. Or perhaps you need to ri revise your methods, sir. I wait for the stinging magical slap across my face, which doesn't come. The three of them just stand there, smiling at each other. Oh, she's a brave one, isn't she? says Bellatrix. You don't know. Like one. One like I. You don't know. Okay, got you. I'm not reading well right now. It's because I'm sitting so far back before I was doing so well. Okay. I'm not going to sit back anymore because I, apparently I can't fucking handle it. Okay. You don't know this one like I do. There we go. I have to be sitting up to do Lucius's voice. That's crazy. That is retarded. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Says Lucius, regarding me with a small smile. She does so like to keep the charade of courage. But she have to. <laughs> but she should have seen her after a few rounds of pain yes yesterday. I made her cry like a little girl she is. His words caused something deep within me to shatter. I'm not a little girl! I screamed, banging my fists in rage against the wall behind me. I'm not a baby! I'm a 17-year-old girl! I am as an adult as any of you! There's a long silence. And then Bellatrix starts to snicker 
silent, uh, slightly. And before long, the three of them are laughing at me, and they all start clapping me. What, what kind of narrative is this? And they all start clapping me. Okay, bringing their hands together in a slow, uh, diversitized applause. Divertite. Oh, where's Debbie Hardy? Um, I can't bear it. I, I can't stand them mocking me. Shut up! I scream. I want to stand up and face them at their own level, but I decided to keep my body hidden. Them overrides my pride. Just shut up! Shut up! They stop clapping, and their laughter dies away as they all look up at me and incredulously smirks on their face. Perhaps she needs more lessons in respect, Lucius. Fuck, that was not Beltrix. <laughs> Beltrix, so hardcore. <sighs> okay, perhaps she needs another lesson in respect, Lucius, says Dolohar. It appears that she still has some learning to do. So many fucking people in this book. They still watch me as I take some deep breaths in an attempt to get a hold of myself. Ask her another question, says Beltrix. Her eyes alight with challenge. But let's make one that she can't possibly answer without a struggle. Let her realize just how quickly she can crack under pressure. I am sure that will knock the arrogance right out of her. Lucia smiles at me. I like that idea better. And I have an idea of what we might ask her. As you know, Dark Lord has always been in unable to touch the boy while he resides at his aunt's house. But the Mudblood has informed us Potter no longer lives with his aunt. If we could discover there where he is currently currently residing in the Dark Lord would be able to seek him out without having to worry about the protection of the boy's mother's blood provides for him. Uh oh. Oh god. Oh god, what have I done? I could have known that telling him... Could I have known that telling him what I did would lead to this? No, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. It doesn't, because I'm not going to tell them this. I won't. Not even if they take me to hell itself. Lucius turns back to me. Where is Harry Potter? My blood. I just stare at him. I can't answer that. It's one thing to put your friends in danger, as I did yesterday, and it's quite another to put in a direct line of fire. Perhaps, besides telling them where he is, wouldn't just put Harry in danger, it would lead them to Ron and the rest of the Weasleys, and anyone else who might be standing and staying there for the wedding. They all watch me, awaiting an answer. But I look only at Lucius. He knows that I'm not going to answer without a fight. He must know that by now. But he's waiting for my initial response with a slight smile on his face. He's enjoying this. He's enjoying forcing me into giving him them what I so badly want to keep from them. He might hate my disobedience, but he enjoys watching me being forced into submission. I raise my head as high as I can before I answer. I won't tell you. I'm saying this more to Lucius than, the, than either of the others. My real battle is against him. I realize that now. It has been ever since he appeared in my bedroom at home. You know that I won't. More than that, I can't tell you. So you might as well move on to your next question, because you won't get an answer out of me. All of three of them continue to smile, and Lucia smiles the widest, enjoying this game he's played with me so many times over. We'll see about that, he says quietly. I'm inclined to believe you wouldn't tell at all soon enough. I'm inclined to believe that you'll tell all, tell all soon enough. I won't. I'll never tell. Never, never, ever. 
Shall we use Cruciatus? asked Dolohoff, rolling up his sleeves. No, said Zixis. Not yet. I think we can afford a little experimentation first. Experimentation? My body tenses, preferring itself for what's to come almost wearily. How long will it be before you get the sick game, Hermione? How long will it be before you get sick of this game, Hermione? I keep reading that wrong. Just like full lines, just wrong. Okay. <clears throat> How long is this recording? 13 minutes? Wait, wait. 14 minutes? I'm on page 69. <laughs> It's not funny. <laughs> I'm on page 69. I've like double spaced each paragraph because that's how she does it. She like puts a space between every time she hits enter. And I was sh kind of shortening it, but there's no point. But it's like really long. So I'm almost like a seventh of the way done. Holy shit, I almost went a seventh way of the way done. No, an eighth. An eighth of the way done. That's, that's still. It's only chapter four. The rest of the chapters in comparison to the first like. Ten must be ridiculously short. Okay. How long will it be before you get sick of this game, Hermione? I push it, this thought out of my mind, squash it, kill it. And I focus on what Lucy is going to do to me now, in this moment. But he surprises me. Instead of pointing his wand at me, he looks at him in the air behind him, beside him. And he catches a pretty, ornate, silver hand mirror. In his hand. What the? Dolohoff and Bellatrix watch him curiously as he crouches down next to me. I wrap my arms around my knees, pulling them to my chest. I look at my knees, bruised knees, and I realize, steadfastly not looking at him. You'll get sick of this by the end, you know. He remembers at me. Everybody does. I ignore him. And he holds the hand mirror up in front of me. Look at yourself, Miss Grinch. I see my pale, waxed yellow face staring back at me in front of the glass before my eyes that are red rimmed and surrounded by purple circle. I have to say, I've looked better. There are traces of blood and dirt smeared all over my face. Frizzy hair plastered to my head and sweat and grease. I imagine you've never really liked the way you look, have you? Lucy's asks, his voice cold and cruel. I have to say, I don't blame you. You're not exactly a beauty, are you? His words hit me like a slap. I've never been happy with my looks. With good reason. If what I can see in the mirror is anything to go by, and now I've had it spelled out for me by him, he thinks I'm hideous. Why do you care about how things you look? I don't care. He can stick his blade's superior attitude and his arrogance and his expensive clothes and and my face. It's changing. My, my teeth, my two front teeth are growing larger and larger and I can't keep my lips over them anymore. And before I know where I am, shit, I've got an overbite worthy of a beaver. A whimper escapes my lips and as it does I can feel a shiver run down over my head. I instinctively run my hand over it and my hair is falling away from my head, coming away in my fingers. I gasp out a dry sob, and I quick, and I grip at the back of my head as clumps of my brown frizz come loose in my fingers, and before I know where I am, I'm almost completely bald. That's it. I can't hold on any more. I burst into tears and they all come scree screaming to the surface. I cover my eyes and my hands, unable to look at my reflection anymore. I hear him stand up and walk away.